Good morning, folks. The Sun gave us a little early present yesterday. Journals and universities complimenting her performance. And of course, as you'll recall from yesterday, there is a special video coming out tonight. But let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day on our star with coronal holes now crowded on all sides by bright spots. One of them, bottom left, is what we saw in the opening and towards the western limb, the photospheric magnetism surged so fast we got a little pop in the corona. This was not big enough to make a CME, but it sure was the miniature version. The solar wind at Earth is very calm, even though we do await a coronal hole intensified plasma stream. Nothing doing geomagnetically as our wait for that continues. But indeed, the top story is those sunspots. The grouping developed quickly throughout the day and is now a nice-looking beta-class magnetism sunspot. As of this morning, the umbral cores have not really developed the surrounding penumbral region, and that is what we'd watch for to indicate she's about to start flaring. There are also five spots at mid or northern latitudes that we're watching. One of those also began dark umbra production this morning. Let's go to the earthquakes where Cascadia trembled for a good portion of the day as numerous above average events struck the region. Hopefully that was it and seismicity does die down there today. Also noteworthy the activity that we had in Central America. Moving on to snow in the week of Christmas and whether it's increasing or decreasing compared to historical records. Blue is more snow in the last 40 years compared to before. Brown is less snow, and they have the full northern hemisphere map as well at the article linked below. A bit of aesthetic beauty before we dive hard into the science. This is a sprite, and for those who don't know, these hard to spot lightning toppers are one of the key signals of the completion of a global electric circuit. The energy from the ionosphere travels down in fair weather, accumulates, discharges, and bursts back up to hit that ionosphere. It's a critical hint about the real driving forces in our weather as well. And with that, let me go to Rice where they're doing new modeling of Earth's magnetic field interacting with the solar wind, but specifically the curl back on the night side. Now as we watch, let me briefly address the new viewers who nearly lost it yesterday in the comment section over the climate comments in the video. Humans need to stop polluting the water, soil, and air because it poisons us, but it has almost nothing to do with the climate. Just because the news hasn't mentioned the scientific coup ongoing doesn't mean it isn't real, and we've been waiting for it. Princeton, Harvard, Yale, the UNIPCC itself, NASA, and as we saw yesterday, the AGU, the number one geophysics group in the country, if not the world. All driving focus on the sun, and it's all because the UN has finally lifted their 40-year exile sentence of solar particle forcing and will allow it into the game in the future. It has been more than two years since they gave us the data set, and not one study using it has published a claim of human-caused climate change. The closed system lab test with CO2 fails. This is not a closed system. This magnetic monster right here is our electromagnetic interface with the heavens. And so we take a little blast into the past to find one of the key papers from last year, one of the key papers from our book, and a good example of irradiance versus particles is the electrodynamics in the nearly zero current effect of solar flaring irradiance on the atmosphere while proton storms were shown to cause a 10 volts per meter spike in the circuit. Spread over the globe, that's a lot of juice. I want to give a nod to a student in Europe who managed to get professors to approve a thesis on proton climate forcing from solar particles. This would have never happened 10 years ago. I have also linked two good news articles on the topic, the first showing how these predictions of climate future are totally nonsense. Even the UN says so. They strictly condemn these forecasts of doom, and you can read about why they condemn climate extremism in the second article. The short version is that they're not reality. They are mostly guesswork. They're intended to be a scenario, not a forecast or prediction, and those are different things. By the way, Roger here, author of the article, pretty sure this guy's dad is indeed one of the heroes of this community. He saw this climate thinking shift 10 years ago and has not been shy about it one bit. Quick little roundup here, we got a study on oxygen nuclei, cosmic ray hits, and cardiac function, where they are noticing moderate effects. It is part of a larger suite that will test carbon, helium, iron, a number of other high energy cosmic rays to see if there are differences in the health effects they cause. Now, that is minutia. We're also finding highly peculiar and high velocity anomalous stellar motions in the galaxy. Interestingly, 
they say almost every case of which has the runaway star heading right for the center of the galaxy. And speaking of the galaxy, the solar system, looking up into the heavens, we've done now dozens of examination of Earth's changes, Earth's magnetic field reversing in progress, the sun's role and the catastrophe cycle in general. But what about the watchtower? What stars do we watch nearby to see if they got hit by the galactic current sheet? And how would we know? What about the other planets in our solar system? Are they changing too? Are any of those changes magnetic? Well, as I mentioned yesterday, I don't have any good news when answering those questions. No good news on that front at all. The examination of the star that's the canary in the galaxy and the changes on the other planets in our solar system is coming up right here in just a few hours. You won't want to miss it. Subscribe and click the notification bell so this afternoon I can show you why the now 40 videos we've done examining the catastrophe cycle over the last year are the most important scientific topic of the near future. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 420 AM in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.